In this video, we're gonna cover five basic select statement queries in SQL. All right, so here I am in PG Admin 4, and I'm gonna go to the Northwind database. If you don't have this database added to your system, I have a video down below to show you how to add it, or you can use whatever database you wanna use. So I'm just gonna use it, pop it open real quick. I'm gonna go to my schemas, and then I'm looking at my tables. That way I have that loaded up so I can see what I'm pulling from. Alternatively, I could load up the ERD or Entity Relationship Diagram where it shows you all the tables and the columns in those tables and how they're connected, but I'll just leave it at this for now. All right, now we wanna go ahead and load up the query tool. So click this button here, and now we can enter our queries. So the first query I wanna do is select all from, let's go with the employees table here. So I'll type in select, and usually the commands for SQL, you wanna type them in capital letters. So like select is all caps. And then asterisk means all. So we we'll put the all in there cause we want to select all from the employees table. And then we'll go to the next line and do from, again, all caps because uh, that's a command for SQL or SQL from employees. And then we leave the other stuff lowercase. So that's kind of how you can uh, keep your code clean. And that way other people can easily identify what's going on in your code. And now we could come up here to this play button to execute it, or we could also press F5 to you know make it shorter. So there's all of our employees. You see it pulls in all of the information, all of the different columns. So if we pop this open and go to columns, we see that there's 18 different columns, like employee ID, last name, first name, title, title of courtesy, and so on. And so there you go, there's all the information in that particular table pertaining to employees. So that's the select all query. Now, let's say you don't wanna select all this information from this table, you just wanna select certain uh, columns. So if you wanna do that, you could do, like let's say you wanna do first name, first name, and then last name, and a five. So now we've selected the first name and last name of the individuals in this table and we don't have any other information. So that way you can kind of, you can extract the information that you actually want from your, your table. All right, so let me go back real quick. Let me select all from this table real quick. And I want to do just for a sake of example, let's say we want the unique title of courtesy per, that's, our, that's in the table here. Uh, so there's this command called distinct. So distinct, and then we type in title of courtesy and F5. And basically what that's gonna show us now is all of the unique titles of courtesy that are in this particular table. So we got Mrs., Mr., Miss, and Doctor. And so it you know, breaks it down to the distinct values. If you threw in like first name as well, it's gonna break down, I mean, basically everything because it's gonna load up the distinct values for Mr. Michael, Dr. Andrew. Now, if there's two Mr. Michaels, then you'd have just one Mr. Michael showing up here, but since there's only one Mr. Michael, there's only one Mr. Michael showing up. So hopefully that's making some sense uh, with distinct, but it can be very helpful and powerful if you're just trying to get like this distinct values from your table. Now another helpful feature are aliases. So let me go and load up everything again real quick at five. So let's say instead of saying address or calling it address, we'll call it street. And instead of postal code, we'll call it zip code. So we can come up here to our query, our select statement, and we'll go with address as street. So street will be the alias of address. And then we also wanted to call postal, postal code as zip code. And then F5. And now you see our column titles are street and zip code instead of address and postal code. So that's a great way to rename the columns in your table. And then for one last example, we can also do arithmetic in our select statement. So let me go ahead and select all from orders five. So let's say that we want to figure out the difference between when an order is made, so order date, and when it's actually shipped out. 
So we could go ahead and do ship date and then do minus order date, F5. And boom, just like that, we have the difference between when the order was made and when it was shipped. So we can kind of see how long it takes for us to ship our products after an order is made, which could be, you know, handy information depending on the analysis we're trying to do. Um, and also you can also do like regular numbers in here. So I could throw like a times three and we'll go ahead and run it real quick at five. And we got an error message here because we're basically doing the, the you know, regular mathematic principles apply order of execution. So basically what it's doing right now is it's taking the order date and multiplying it by three. Uh, but we don't want to do that. We want to do so we can throw in our parentheses is what I'm trying to show you. So we can do that, which will create a date. And then we're going to times it by three, which I don't know why you do that, but I just wanted to show you that you can do parentheses. You can do subtraction, multiplication. You could throw in division in there. If you want to, you can add numbers in here if you want to. And then you could also, as you notice the column title is kind of weird looking. So you could be like as shipped info or something to that effect. Let me do an underscore here. So as shipped info, so there we are using an alias. So that way our, our math isn't looking all funky. So those are some of the basic SQL select queries. If you found this video helpful, I appreciate any likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great day.